Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today's video is a little bit different so I'm actually going to be doing a brief overview of how you can use Git and GitHub with Godot 4 and if you don't know what Git and GitHub are, it's basically a version control system that tracks changes uh, that you set on your computer files so it makes it a lot easier to work with your projects so that you don't have to worry too much about breaking your code and also it facilitates collaborating with others. So I feel like it's definitely something that you should look into if you're a programmer or you're doing stuff like making games and so forth. So with that said, let's actually jump right into the video and get started. So the first thing we want to do to get started with Git and GitHub is we actually want to download it. So if you go to Google and search for Git, and it will pretty much be the first result. So it would be the Git dash scm.com so you want to visit this website and the link will actually be in the description so here we are on the home page and we want to go ahead and download git so you notice that there's a monitor here with a button for download uh, in my case it's download for windows in your case it might show uh, download for mac depending on your operating system but I want to click that button and then it redirects me to the download page where it shows me various different versions that I can download. So there's things like the 32 bit, 64 bits, but there's actually a link at the very top that says click here to download the latest version basically. So we pretty much want to click on that and then it will download Git on our computer. So it will download the installer. Once the installer is downloaded, then we want to simply go ahead and launch it and then just walk through the process of the installer. So it's pretty straightforward. Now the reason I'm not doing it here is because I already have it downloaded. And once it's actually downloaded, if we go into the search bar and type in CMD or command prompt, we actually have access to the git commands. So if we type in git, you will notice all these different commands that we have here, which are related to git. So stuff like clone, init, add, and so forth. And I'm going to be going over some of these uh, commands, uh, the more important ones, in this tutorial. So let's just close out of that for now. So with the git downloaded, we can actually go into Godot 4 now. So here I am in Godot 4, and let's say we're creating a new project. So I'm assuming you already know how to create a new project. So you would go ahead and create a new project and make sure that you leave the default here where it says version control metadata to Git. And then once we create the project, you will notice that there's two files in our project folder. So there's the git ignore and the git attributes files, which is something we actually want. Now I'm going to continue with this tutorial with a project that I already have some uh, things done in it. Uh, so I'm going to do it with my top down controller. So if I go into my top down controller project here, as you can see here, I already did some work here, but this isn't an actual Git project. If I want this to initiate this as a Git project, I want to actually go into the command prompt. Now I know Godot actually does have a plugin that you can use uh, from the asset library, which allows you to use Git and GitHub uh, through a GUI. Uh, but I think it's a lot easier just to actually use the command prompt. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. So in our search bar, we're going to do CMD. Now I am going to, I am in a Windows machine. So the commands that I'm using are for Windows. Uh, they might be slightly different on Mac. So here I am in command prompt. And then basically I want to navigate to the project folder. And in my case, that's on my F drive. So I want to go into my F drive by doing F colon. And now I'm on my F drive. Then I, like I said, I want to go into my project folder. And to do that, I can use the CD command and then specify a folder name. So in this case, I believe the folder I want to access is called Golda. And I can start typing and then I can click tab and it pretty much will auto complete what I'm trying to type. So in this case it's the Golda folder. So CD Golda. So now I'm on the Golda folder. Now I want to do CD again and I want to go into my projects folder. CD once more. Go into my tutorials folder. CD again and go into my Golda uh, for folder and another handy command while you're doing this now I know the path to my project uh, to my project but another way that you can kind of uh, it helps you know figure out the <laughs> the uh, path is by doing the dir command on Windows so there will pretty much show you all the files and folders in the current 
you know folder that you're on so in this case in my godot folder i have uh these current files here so i have the kenny top down tank and the top down controller folder so i want to go into the top down controller folder by doing cd and then top down controller. Now I'm in my Godot project and I can tell that by doing dir. And then as you can see here, I have all my uh, Godot project files. So CD is pretty much to go into specific directories and then dir is to show all the files and folders that are part of that directory. And now to get started with git and actually initialize this go, uh, Godot project as a git project, we wanna do git init. So this is initializing our project as a git project. So then we can do something like git status. So this will show us the status, the status of our files and it tells us if we have actually committed them to this git project. And it highlights everything as red since we haven't added any of these files to our git project. To add the files, we can do git add and then the name of the file. So for example, icon and then tab to auto-complete it, so icon.svg. And if I do that, and I do git status again, now you will notice that the icon.svg file is highlighted green because we added it to our git project and basically uh, have it to be committed. Now, if we wanna add everything in our project to our git, then we wanna do git add and then we can do that and this will add everything to our git so now if we do git status you'll notice that everything is highlighted green and that's because we use the git add period command and that adds everything to be committed now the next thing we want to do is actually commit the changes that we made so we can do git commit dash m and then double quotes and inside the double quotes, we want to add a message which pretty much describes what we did in this step. So in this case, it would be added initial files. That's what we did in this first commit, the first step. So now that we do that, pretty much all these files are now committed into our Git project. And then afterwards, we would want to do something like Git push. But as you notice, it actually says that we pretty much don't have a remote repository. And to define the remote repository, that's where GitHub comes in. So if I actually go ahead and go into my browser here, and here I am on GitHub. So you do have to sign up for a GitHub account. But uh, once you sign up, you will be meted with a screen like this. And to create a repository, we want to create, uh, well, we want to click on this plus icon here and do new repository. Then here we have some options and there's a repository name field. Here we can specify a name for a repository. So we can do something like do uh, dash four dash top down controller. And then it will tell us if this name is actually available, which most likely it will, since you're saving it under your specific uh, GitHub account. And then pretty much everything else, we want to leave it as default, uh, since we're actually using an existing project. And uh, now you could change it to be public or private. Uh, so change it to whether you want it to be private and only you can see it or public where anyone can see it. Uh, so I would just leave it as default unless you really do care and uh, want to have the project to be private. That's up to you. But I'm just going to keep it uh, keep it to be public by default. And then, like I said, keep everything else the same and then just click the create repository button. And then we are taken to the screen. So by default, it's set to HTTPS, I believe. And you can just pretty much click on this copy button and then go back to your command prompt and then pretty much just paste, uh, paste these three commands. In my case, I have to do things a little bit different. So in my case, I have to use the SSH because I did some uh, configuration to my Git uh, where I configured it to be able to allow me to use multiple accounts. And I pretty much have to use SSH in my case because of that. So it shouldn't really matter which one you use, uh, but for me, I do have to use SSH. But it's, as you can see, it's pretty much the same. It's just the the first uh, command that's slightly different. Uh, so pretty much just go ahead and copy it. So in this case, I'm just gonna copy line by line. So control copy, 
go back to your command prompt where you have uh, your command uh, your get stuff going and then uh, you can just paste that line of code now in my case like I said I configured some stuff with my GitHub, so I do have to do one other uh, change here so let me just uh, make sure that I'm doing it properly so control V and then in my case in my case I have to do this in your case you don't uh, you just you can just copy the line and paste it directly in my case I have to do it slightly different uh, so you don't need to uh, do exactly what I'm doing here besides just copying the command that you got from the GitHub and then pasting it and then pressing enter. And then once you press enter, you can copy the next line and then go back to the command prompt, get branch dash M main. And then finally the last one and go back to the command prompt and then control V and then enter. And there we go. So this pretty much pushed all our changes to this GitHub repository. So if I refresh the page here, you can see that now we have uh, all these files as part of our GitHub. And then pretty much if we want to access this from any other computer, we can click on this code button and then download the zip file, or we can copy this code here uh, by clicking this option there and then you would want to do the git init command again to initialize uh, or no you don't actually have to do git uh, init actually if you want to get the code and uh, from another computer you can just do git clone and then basically copy this uh, line of code and just paste it uh, like so and then press enter and that will pretty much copy all the files that you have on the github repository and then you'll pretty much just be able to work with it. Uh, so in this case, we already have all the project files, so we don't need to do that, but that's if you wanna access uh, all those files from another computer, uh, that you can do it that way. Anyway, uh, let's just go back to Godot and have the command prompt open. So let's say I want to go ahead and add a new feature to my game. Well, to put our uh, minds to ease and not worry about breaking our code, we can actually do something like git branch and then a name of our branch. So new feature. And then this will pretty much create a new branch and then we can do git checkout. And, and then the name of the branch that we just created. So new feature, like so. And as you can see here, it says switch to branch new feature. So now we're in a new branch. We're not on our main branch. So any code that we write now and push to our GitHub, it will pretty much be push to this branch without affecting the code in our main branch. So we're creating multiple versions of our code basically. Uh, so then we can pretty much, let's say, make any changes to our game here. So let's say I change the position of my tank here. And then if I go back to my uh, terminal here, my command prompt, and I do get status, you'll notice that the level uh, file was changed. It's showing up like there was a change to it and it's showing up red because we need to commit the change uh, that we made. So we can just do get add and that to add it or we can specify the name directly of the file if we don't want to add everything in this case i want to add everything and if i do git status again it's going to be green so then now i can do git commit dash m uh, double quotes and then i can you know put a description of what i did so change the tank position or something like that and then paste it and then the last thing we're gonna do is do git push or uh, actually write it properly to git push to push it to our repository now in this case it didn't do it and it actually wants me to do git push uh, so it wants me to do this here so we can just highlight that and copy it and then we can go ahead and paste it and there we go it pushed it to our repository so if I go into my uh, browser and refresh You'll notice now that I have two branches where I have a new feature branch that I see here. So let's go back to our 
our actual repository folder and then you notice that there's also uh, uh, an alert here so it says new feature has re added recent pushes less than a minute ago and then it has the green button that says compare and push request so if we actually want to merge our let's say we finish working on our new feature and we actually want to have this uh, be part of our main branch now so we actually want to uh, merge the main branch and our new feature branch so that it's all together. We can go ahead and click this button here, compare and push request. And then here it will pretty much show us the changes between uh, the branches. So in this case, uh, you notice that basically the position was changed. So we can review the code, we can leave a comment, and then we can create a push request or a pull request. So this is pretty much, you know, creating a request to merge uh, the two branches. So merge our main branch and our new feature branch. And then we can see some more information here. And then we can, if we pretty much agree with this merge or pull request, we can just click on the merge pull request and then click confirm merge. And then it will tell us pull requests successfully merged and closed. You're all set, the new feature branch can be safely deleted. So we can actually now delete the uh, new feature branch since we merged it with our main branch. So we don't actually need it anymore. So now if we go back to our repository here, the changes that we made to our levels file, as you can see it was two minutes ago, are now part of the main branch. So that's how you can actually work uh, with Git and GitHub. Uh, now, the only other important thing to actually do, which I also forgot, uh, uh, you know, to mention is, let's say, you know, you're working with someone else, a, a team member, and they, you know, made a pull request and they merged to the main branch and you want to have the latest copy of that code. Well, to get the latest copy of the code, you want to do git pull. And that's the command we want to use. So in this case, once you do that, it will pretty much copy all the new files and changes that were made to the GitHub repository, and that will add them to your uh, local copy of the files as well. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the main gist of everything that you need to know. Uh, if I missed anything, definitely let me know. So uh, yeah, I forgot to mention something important. And that is here on uh, GitHub, you can actually create a license file. And to create a license file, you can simply click on the add file, create new file. And then you have a field here where you can start typing. So you can do something like lie. Uh, sense and once you type it there's an option that says choose a license template you can click on that option click OK and then it gives you a bunch of different license uh, files that you can add to your github uh, repository in this case most likely you want to use an MIT license so if I click MIT it gives me all the information in regards to this specific license and then I can just simply click review and submit and then here I can see more details about that license and then I can just go ahead and commit or cancel the changes. Now in my case, I already do have a license created for this repository, so I don't need to do that. And then uh, you can also create a readme file from uh, GitHub by clicking this green button here. Now you could also create the license file and the readme from your code editor. Now, if you do do it from your code editor, then you want to make sure that you actually uh, push uh, the changes uh, to rep the repository by doing uh, git add and adding the two files and then doing git push to push them to the repository. Now, if you do it directly from GitHub, as I showed you here, then you want to go ahead and do a git pull command to actually get the files from GitHub to also be part of your local copies of the files. So yeah, I just forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah, hopefully that uh, helps you get started with Git and GitHub. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.